is it bright enough or do I have to go and get one of my big light things? <laughs> I'll just quickly show you what I'm doing. I've got this uh, muslin here. Very thin. I'm not going to cut it because it will be useful when I've finished with it in the size that it is. So I'm just going to put it on onto this picture frame with pins. I've just spent ages looking for pins. And that one's bent. Let's tip them out. There we go. It doesn't have to be terribly strong. Uh, a bit nearer than that, I think. There we go. Yeah, I couldn't find this jar of pins anywhere. I'd put them in a safe place. Do you do that? I think maybe you can see me now. But do you do that? Do you put things in a safe place? And then spend half an hour looking for them like I just have. So it doesn't have to be tight, not at all, for what I'm doing. It just has to allow the air to flow through. So this morning I went into the garden where the courgettes are growing and where I've planted lots and lots of calendula, like far more calendula than you, than you need, but they do look very, very pretty, uh, that beautiful orange um, and some, some yellow and some orange. So I looked at them this morning and it's been a really lovely sunny day and the, the last couple of days we've had quite a bit of rain. I waited until, it's about one o'clock now, I waited till the sun had been on them all day so they'd be nice and dry but I'm now going to dry them further. I cut loads of heads and what I'm going to do with them now then is dry them on this makeshift drying frame, just an old picture frame um, and as I say a bit of muslin or a bit of anything it's nice and thin, anything it doesn't have to be, you don't have to buy it specially, a bit of netting or whatever you've got really. And I'm going to I'll show you what I'm going to do. Oh, there's another one there so that they're nicely spaced. That one's not in very far. There we go. So I picked the petals in this basket. I made this basket years ago. I was just remembering that I, I went on a basket making course, just a day long thing, and I made a video about it a long time ago. And I really like this basket. <laughs> So I've just cut these and I've just chosen to cut just the orange ones and I'm going to, I could put them like that now I guess. Shall I do that? Yeah, I'm going to just put them face down like that for a few days and then I'll take the petals off. If I take the petals off now, they'll just be a big old mess, won't they? And this will be a, a lot easier I think to carry around uh, with the petals like this. So I'm just going to put them on this rack that I've made. And then I've got to decide where they're going to go. Where are they going to go? These are lovely and dry. They're beautiful, aren't they? And I'm going to make a salve, like a, a cream that you can use on um, itchy skin or a burn or rash. Because calendula's got fantastic healing properties. And I'm going to use uh, do this with beeswax. Now... I need to get in and have a look at my bees and it might be that I can use a bit of my own beeswax or my own bees beeswax uh, but we'll see if uh, if I'll see because the top bar hive isn't at all like a normal hive not at all it's um <laughs> they, they just go a little bit funky in there and make a lot of brace comb but it might be that I can get my suit on and go and have a look out there on a nice sunny day, which it might be today, but I'll tell you why I can't do that today in a minute. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I wonder if I've picked too few or too many. 
it'd be nice to fill this wouldn't it and then I've got to decide where I'm going to put it just somewhere out of the way where it's dry and that's all really somewhere nice and dry but somewhere where they just won't get slept on by cats or knocked or whatever so yeah that's what I'm going to do and I guess if I've picked too few I can go and get a few more I don't think I've picked too many So this is going to be a project that is going to take quite a while, but I'll bring you back for all the different stages. And these will just be for me to have and little gifts for my family. Well, it's a few days later now, and I've decided to put this tray in my bedroom, uh, which is well out of the way of cats. And these petals now are very dry. Well they're not 100% dry but what they are is much smaller. So what I might do is move them up and put some more fresh ones at the bottom and dry lots of them. I mean how many do I need? Yeah I am. I'm going to pick a few more. I'll move all the dried ones up here now that they're a bit smaller and I'll put some new fresh ones at the bottom. Yeah, they're pretty dry now, aren't they? Yeah. So we're a long way off a finish with this task, but uh, it's um, lots of fun to do. the next part of the calendula salve now. Um, the petals have dried and I've just pulled them off the flowers. Here they are. They smell beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So the next part is to soak them in oil for ooh, four to six weeks and uh, lots of different sorts of oil they, uh, you, they recommend you use and I'm using apricot kernel oil because that sounded quite nice and I have a litre of it here and uh, I'm going to put it into this, I'm going to make it in here. So I've chosen this because it's got a nice wide mouth, thought it'd be much easier to get the petals in. Um, am I going to use them all? Oh go on, I'm going to use them all. If I haven't got enough apricot kernel oil we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay this is, it's simple. Uh, it's a simple matter, it looks pretty doesn't it? It's a simple matter of pouring the oil onto the petals. That's about perfect. I'll just get a spoon and press it down so that all the petals are underwater oil. And now I just have to leave that in the dark now and just maybe once a week give it a good stir around. So um, this pot hasn't got a lid, 
but I'm going to use this pretty plate. And that's it. We'll see that again in a few weeks time. It's the elderberry time again. Last year I couldn't make elderberry cordial, I wasn't very well. But this year I've been watching them and they're ripe and ready and I want to make a bit of elderberry cordial. Very, very good in hot water for colds. It's very good anyway. Now, the problem is there are some here, but most of them are right up there. I can't reach them. So, Anna and I have devised a plan that will involve, well, much hilarity probably. So we thought you might enjoy it. We're gonna set the camera up now so that we can film collecting those elderberries. Sometimes people say to me, oh, don't take all the elderberries because the birds want some of them. There are thousands of elderberry trees around here, elder trees around here. We don't need to worry about the birds. I'm just taking a few. So come on, Anna, let's set the camera up and see if we can collect the taller up, the higher elderberries, because they won't be enough. You all right, won't you? So Anna's going to stand on a stool. <laughs> now you've said now, that. Like, ah. Now I've put doubt in her mind. Are you going to be all right, Anna? Yes. I've put doubt in her mind. And now okay. she's going to... Is this is stable? Yeah, it's fine. It's all yeah. good. Ah. She's going to climb up with the loppers, but don't lop anything <laughs> until I get below you. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to try and catch them. All right, I can get these guys for short. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, this is not going to work. Okay. Okay, one. I'm going. Oh. <laughs> I'll be washing them all. Yeah. Right, okay, and again. <laughs> oh, I got that one in my arm that oh, time. Oh, well then. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, we're getting better work. at this. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that go? There, there it is. Hey, how many more do you awesome. need? Awesome. Oh, five times that number. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't need too much. Okay. No, wait a sec. I'm just going to take the stalks off. Mm -hmm. Then there's more room in my bowl okay. for catching purposes. One more. Hang on. Okay. Right. Now where's she I going? Wow! <laughs> about this guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he went off the... <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah, no! No, okay, climb down. Oh, yeah, climb down. Okay, oh, this one, this one's quite right and close. Yes! Oh, that was a good one. Oh, I'm get this one. Oh, hang on. Ah! I just... <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Anna, if you could if you could get hold of the branch and bend it down, yeah, might that work? I I would I can't reach the branch. I this one's quite hang on quite right. hang on wait till I get to the other side. Oh. Get that with a second. Are you good? <laughs> right, I, this is too stressful for ah, me. Even. Okay, I'll get down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So we've got all those elderberries now and I've soaked them in cold water just to give them a good good old wash and now I'm taking them off the stalks and you can do it with your fingers like that and so that you end up like that with these little branches here or another way of doing it is with a fork and you can get the tines of a fork and run that down the oops a daisy run that down the branches that way. To be honest, I prefer using my fingers. I mean the fork's slightly quicker, but the fingers work fine. So I'm just going to tweak them all off here. And then I'm going to put them in a pan and just barely cover them with water and let them come to a gentle simmer for, I don't know, uh, half an hour, a bit longer, so that all the juice comes out and the cell walls break down. And then the next job is to strain that liquid through 
a cloth and catch the pure liquid rather than all these little bits of stalks and skin and all of that. So that's what I'm going to do next. So in here, I get a big spoon. I've boiled up the elderberries. I've just covered them with water and boiled them up. Now, the next thing I need to do is strain them through a cloth. And this is the way, I'll just move the bottles. I've got those all ready and sterilized, but we don't need them yet. Let's get those out of the way. This is the way that I've come up with how I always do whenever I'm making jelly or um, well just jelly really or elderberry syrup I strain it like this and so this is my stool turned upside down and with elastic bands I've attached a brand new dishcloth it's not just a clean one it's a nice new one and I need to put this underneath it but this is too far away and would splash a bit so the way that I've discovered to do it is by putting that like that and then that like that and then it's a lot nearer the liquid for splashing purposes now here it is just for ease of reaching our puppet here but it, it's happy to sit up there now here we go so now I'm going to pop this in here and you can see can't you that if I didn't have it raised up it would splash about all over the place I'll pop this in here And that can just sit there for an hour or so and drip through. And um, what I sometimes do, and I think I'll do it with this this time, is I put the elderberries back in the, the pan, a little bit more water and boil that up again, because there's still a lot of juice left in those berries when it's strained through once. And we're going to let that strain now. And when it's um, all gone through, I'll measure how much liquid there is, and that will tell me how much sugar to put in. But for now, it's just a question of a slow drip drip process. So while that's dripping, I thought we'd have a more dripping. <laughs> uh, I've got this little set up here, which is again a piece of cloth in my sieve over a bowl and this that you saw a while ago which is the oil and calendula petals and I used apricot kernel oil and um, basically I didn't weigh the petals I just filled this container with them and then just covered them over with oil so I'm not quite sure how much oil I'm, I'm going to get but I'm going to strain it now so that we can have all this dripping going on at the same time. I think I might just use a spoon for this one as well, just so that, there we go. Oh, look at that oil. What a beautiful colour. And we'll strain all this. There we are. Of it. This has been in there for a few weeks now, in the dark, the back of a cupboard, in the dark. And I'll tell you what's marvellous about doing this today. It's a horrible day outside. 
The rain's lashing down, it's cold, I've got the fire lit. And I'm remembering just how beautiful it was the day that I picked these calendula flowers and the elderberries. So we'll let that lot drip for a while and see how much oil we get and see how much elderberry flavoured water we get. Let's have a quick look at this. Look at that. Wow. That's beautiful. Okay. I did what I, I said I would do and I put a little bit more water in the remaining berries, boiled it up again and dripped that through. So that one's done now and that's the drippings of the elderberry. Now I'm working two recipes here so I've got to be careful to make sure that I do the right thing with the right pan. So this arrangement here is for the calendula salve but first we'll get the elderberry juice going. Now, I need to, uh, that will go in the compost heap, so I just need to get rid of that for now. And then find out how much liquid I've got from my lovely boiling up. And I'm going to do that by, so I'm going to do that by measuring it in this jug. It's a simple recipe. I need a spoon so it doesn't splash. It's a very simple recipe. Half the amount of liquid. The amount of liquid... It's not that simple, is it? The amount of liquid, you need the half that amount of sugar. So there's 350 grams of just ordinary granulated sugar and I'm going to pour that into my 700 ml of elderberry water. So now we need the juice of a lemon and I like to use this tool here which is a it's just a clever piece of wood you screw into the lemon like that get the juice out And I usually have to sieve it, but there seems to be no pips in here. But if there are, I'll sieve it through a little tea strainer to get the pips out. And that goes into the elderberry. And all it has to do is dissolve the sugar. We're not making like a preserve here, like a jam or a jelly. And so this is, um, it stays in the fridge and you really need to use it up quite quickly. So. Yeah, that's fine. There are no pips in there, so all of that can go in there. Let's get some tea on the go. There we are. Okay, so now, this is my calendula, which is going to be the calendula salve that I'm going to make. I find the recipes when I do these things just online I just google what I want to make and there are the recipes and because this is a one litre of apricot kernel oil I wanted a recipe that was in grams so that I could it's hard to switch between two different measurements or three you know cups grams or ounces try and stick with one so I'm doing all grams here and what this recipe wants is beeswax, which is the thing that sets it. So I've got this beeswax, um, what are they? Beautiful, tiny little bits of beeswax pellets. And they're going to go into my oils here. And then this recipe, there's so many different recipes. I've looked at loads of them. That's going to go in there like that. It's very satisfying. And then... The recipe I'm using has got honey in and as I keep bees it's very nice to use my bees honey and this is a little bit of bees honey that's got bees wax in it but that's fine because we you know the bees wax is fine so I'm putting a small amount of honey in there as well and then one of the optional extras was some lavender oil 
and I thought that because not everybody l likes a scented product, I thought that I would put some lavender oil in the last few. So a bit heavy on the spoons for the washing up here, but that's okay. And what I'm going to do with that now is put that over a pan of water that's gently simmering. Or rather it will be soon. And I'm going to just let that warm up. Everything will melt and incorporate and then I will pour it into my little tins. I got some of these sweet little tins which will make really great gifts and also be really easy to store. So they're ready for when I need them. The bottles are ready for when I want to do bottle up the elderberry syrup and the tea's poured. <laughs> so that's fine. That's fine. Everything's just going to be sitting there probably for um, the rest of the afternoon and we'll get back and we'll put those in the tins a bit later. Time for a cup of tea Anna. Well it's quite a bit later now and the elderberry is ready to put in the bottles. I'm just letting it cool a little bit more. And this amazing calendula potion, all the honey and the beeswax has all beautifully melted. There's a tiny bit of sediment on the bottom, so I'm going to avoid that. And I'm filling these small um, tins that I just bought them off Amazon, in fact. Uh, and I'm filling these up and I, I did my test one here. I can't get over the colour. I think the colour is absolutely fantastic with those calendula petals. And then I did an experiment of sprinkling a few petals on the top and I think that looks really really nice. So the next one I did, I sprinkled the petals before it was set and they've sunk. So there's going to be a critical moment. If petal sprinkling is going to happen, is going to be a critical moment of when I do the sprinkling, when it's mostly set. Now, this is very exciting. It's just, I'm loving it. But the pouring in is proving to be a bit drippy and wax everywhere. So I'm going to try putting it into this jug so that I can pour it a little more carefully without getting wax drips everywhere probably a better way of doing this but this will do and it just means that everything I own is going to get covered with beeswax but let's try that now yeah it sets you see onto the cold jug but that's okay oh isn't it lovely I'm going to fill them right to the top because they shrink down ever so slightly with that one that I did over there Oh yes, is definitely the way to do it. And then the bits that solidify inside the containers, I'll just scrape them off and I'll use those. These bits here, I'll have those for me. So I think I can sprinkle, I don't want it rock hard because I want them to kind of stick a deer to the oil. I don't know, maybe this is a thing too far. And so that one, I think we could risk putting a few onto that one. There, that hasn't sunk. So I've got to wait till the others are at that stage. So the elderberry's ready to bottle up now. And I've tasted a little teaspoonful and it's absolutely delicious. It needs to be diluted, but you could have it neat I guess on um, ice cream that would be quite nice but it's a good drink to have in the winter time in hot water if you feel a cold coming on it's very very rich in vitamin C so this is looking good for bottles mm. just a bit left okay I'll just do one of these bottles then and I'll have that one 
So we've made the, um, hang on, I can't talk and pull it seems. <laughs> yeah, that's a little part one that I'll start away with that one. So I've made the calendula salve now and it's setting absolutely beautifully. The elderberry cordial. That will keep in the fridge for a good month or so. And then I might make a drink of this now. So put the kettle on, make a, make a drink of that. And then here we go. These are done. In fact, that one's cold. So when I put the little lid on there like that. And now I need a nice little round label on the top there, a little sticker on the top. I'm going to also need to wipe it with little bits of spill. But for my first go at making um, calendula salve, I'm pleased with that. So I think there'll be some little presents going to my kids. It's a nice little stocking filler. Calendula salve is very good for after you've been gardening, if you want to uh, put some cream on your hands or if you've got an irritated skin or a burn uh, it's very good for all of those kinds of things and it smells quite neutral not got a, a big smell to it I had an idea to put some lavender oil in but I thought I'd keep it nice and simple and it's gorgeous on your hands well I'm pleased with my afternoon's work. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it and if you have give it a thumbs up. What that does it tells YouTube that you're enjoying these videos and then YouTube will recommend them to other people and that would be nice. So I'll see you next time with something else.